Amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord again. Amen. Are you glad to be in the house of the Lord? Let's all please stand and let's give God praise. Hallelujah. Let's worship Jesus. Hallelujah. For he is the reason why we are here to give God praise, to give him thanks, to give him glory, to lift him up, to bless him. Hallelujah. To worship him. Hallelujah. To give thanks unto the Lord for he is good for his mercy endureth forever. Hallelujah. Lord, we praise you. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we glorify you, Jesus. Lord, we magnify your name, Jesus. Lord, we enter into your gates, Lord, with thanksgiving. We enter into your courts, Jesus, with praise. Lord, we bless you today, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Give thanks, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, his mercy, his do it forever. We bless your name, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. Uh, we exalt your name, Jesus. Uh, oh, worship him. Hallelujah. Because he's good. Hallelujah. We have a reason to give him praise. We have a reason to give him glory because he woke us up today. We praise him and we bless him. Hallelujah. Oh, be glorified, Jesus. Be glorified, Jesus. Be glorified, Jesus. Uh, be glorified. Jesus. Oh, we thank you today, God. We thank you today, God. We shout hallelujah to your name, God, because you are good, Lord, and your mercy is good to us, Jesus. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silent before him. The Lord is in his holy temple let all the earth keep silent be Amen. We're just going to sing a little congregational. The song says, praise the name of Jesus, for he is our rock. He is our fortress. Hallelujah. We're going to praise him today with the clapping of our hands, with the lifting of our voice. Amen. And we're going to give God thanks. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. He's my rock. He's my fortress, he's my deliverer, in him will I trust. Praise the name of Jesus. Come on and praise the name of Jesus. Oh, praise his name. He is our rock, he is our fortress. Fortress. He is my 
is the name. Oh, what's his name? He is my rock. He is my fortress. He is my deliverer. Oh, with him. Oh, praise his name. Jesus. Jesus, 
Lord, we worship you, Jesus. Lord, we give you thanks, Jesus. We give you glory, Jesus. We give you praises, oh God. With adoration, Jesus, we bless you. We worship you, Jesus. Oh, we give you thanks today, God, for being good to us, Jesus. Oh, we bless your name, oh God. Oh, we worship you, Lord Jesus. Oh, we give you glory, Lord. We give you thanks, Jesus. We give you praises, Jesus. Oh, because you deserve it, Jesus. What a wonderful God you are. Oh, we bless your name today Jesus we worship you Lord Jesus we give you praises oh God we give you praise God we send up your praises Jesus oh magnify him bless him worship him adore him oh because he's God he's wonderful he's magnificent he's holy he's righteous oh what a wonderful God what a mighty God you are Lord the angels bow before you. Heaven and earth adore you, Jesus. Oh, wonderful, 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 wonderful is our God. Wonderful is our Lord. Oh, we praise you, Lord Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. We give you thanks, God. Oh, give him thanks. Give thanks, give thanks, give thanks. Oh, give thanks, give thanks. Give thanks unto the Lord because he's good. Oh, we bless you today, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. Oh, just magnify him. Just glorify him. Oh, bless him. Wonderful. His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. Oh, Jesus. His name is wonderful. Oh, Jesus. His name is great. Jesus. His name is great. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Jesus, oh Jesus, we praise you, we worship you, Jesus, let your glory, Jesus, oh fill this place, Jesus, oh we thank you, Lord, for your glory, Jesus, we thank you, Jesus, oh just thank him, oh he's so wonderful, he's so marvelous, he's so excellent, he's so great, oh there's something about the name of Jesus, Oh, just give him praise. Worthy is the lamb. Worthy, worthy, worthy. Worthy is the lamb. Worthy is the lamb of God. Oh, we thank you. We thank you for being worthy, Jesus. We thank you for being worthy, Jesus. We thank you for being worthy, Jesus. Oh, we thank you. Worthy God. Worthy God. Worthy. Worthy God, worthy Jesus, worthy Lord, you're so worthy Jesus, oh hallelujah, hallelujah, glory and honor, glory and honor belongs to you Jesus, oh we thank you Lord, we give you praises Jesus, because you're so worthy, he's so worthy to be praised, he's so wonderful, he's so mighty, he's so so excellent, worthy is the Lamb of God, worthy is the Lamb of God, hallelujah, 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 let his praises rise today, let it rise, let it rise, let it rise, let it rise, let his glory rise today, we thank you Jesus, we worship you, Jesus. Lord, we set the atmosphere of praise, Jesus. We set the atmosphere of praise, Jesus. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. We invite you in, Jesus. We invite you in, Jesus. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. Oh, we thank you. Let his glory come on in, Jesus. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. Wonderful counselor mighty shepherd great God great King you are Lord you are Lord Jesus you are a good God you are a good God Jesus Lord we thank you today Jesus we bless your name today Jesus he's so wonderful our hallelujah belongs to you Jesus 
because you deserve it, Jesus. Hallelujah. We bless you, Lord Jesus. What a wonderful God you are, Jesus. We thank you today, God, and we bless him. Hallelujah. 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 Just think about his goodness. Just think about his mercy. Just think about his grace. He's so wonderful. He's so wonderful. He's the rock of all ages. Hallelujah. He is a mighty God. He is a great Jesus. He is the great Jehovah. He is our provider. Hallelujah. We bless him today. We worship him today. We exalt him today. Today. Because tomorrow is not promised. We worship him today. This minute, this a minute, hallelujah. We worship him today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. With the breath of our body, Jesus, we say thank you. Hallelujah. With all of our being, Jesus, we just say thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For giving us strength, Jesus, we thank you. For giving us peace of mind, Jesus, we thank you. For giving us a heart to worship you, Jesus, we thank you. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. In everything, we give you thanks. In everything, we give you thanks, Jesus. Oh, in everything, we give you thanks, Lord, because you are so worthy, because you're so great, Jesus. You're so righteous, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Hallelujah. All the earth adore you, Jesus. All the earth adore you, Jesus. All the earth adore you, Jesus. Creation adores you, Jesus. Oh, you're so wonderful, Jesus. You're so great, God. You're so good, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. We bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ, his son. And now let the weak say I am strong. Let the poor say I am rich because of what the Lord has done for us. Give thanks. Give thanks. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ his and now let the weak say and now let the weak say I am strong let the poor say I am rich because of what the Lord has done for us. Give thanks, give thanks. Oh, give him thanks, give thanks. Give thanks, give thanks. With a 
grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ His. And now let the weak say, and now let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich because of what the Lord has done for me. the Lord has done for and now and now let the weak say and let the poor let the poor say I am rich because of what the Lord has done for Poor say, say I am rich because of what, hallelujah, the Lord has done for and now. Hallelujah. Let the weak say I am strong. Let the poor say I am rich of what the Lord has done for us. Give thanks. Oh, give thanks. Give thanks. Give thanks. Give thanks. With a grateful heart. Give thanks. To the Holy One, give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ. His The Lord has done for us. Give thanks. Give him thanks. Give thanks. Oh, give thanks. Give thanks. Give thanks unto the Lord. Give Sing. 
lullaby to your name. Hallelujah. You're the sweetest one, Lord, in the world, God. Hallelujah. We bask in your presence this morning, God. We bask in your presence, God. Hallelujah. 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 We bless your name, God. Hallelujah. 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 God, we bless you this morning. God, we come before your holy throne, God, just to thank you one more time for allowing us to be in, in the land of the living. We thank you, Lord, for fresh oil on this day, God. God, we thank you for fresh strength on this day, God. We thank you for fresh encouragement on this day, God. We thank you that this is the day that you have made. And as an act of our will, we will rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you in the name of Jesus. All we hear is bad reports and what's going on out in the world, but we thank you for what you're doing in the midst of our sanctuary. We thank you for the love that we feel, God. We thank you for the joy that's in our hearts, God. We thank you for every smile, God, that walked into this door this day, Father. We thank you, oh God, in the name of Jesus, because only you know what, we went on, what went on last night and the night before. But we thank you that we can come into your house, God, and draw strength one from another, God. This is why we thank you, God, because in here we find safety, God. In here we find peace. In here, oh God, is where we'll be able to be put back together, oh God. Because your word said, my house shall be called the house of prayer for all people. So we thank you this morning, God. Hallelujah. We ain't going to complain about what the devil is doing. We're going to rejoice about what you're doing, God. But your word said, look up. For your redemption draweth nigh. We thank you, Lord God, to be encouraged one more time, God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. We love you today, God. We thank you for all that our hearts are already feeling, God. We thank you for our devotionalist, God. A young lady, oh God, who able to usher us into the presence of the Lord. For in the presence of the Lord, there's fullness of joy. And at your right hand, there's pleasure forevermore. We wake up in the morning and say, how you doing? And somebody look at, what's so good about it? We thank you that you woke us up one more time, God. That we can see the sun shining, oh God. And knowing that you're still alive and you're still real, God. Hallelujah to your name. Somebody said that since the fathers fell asleep, all things remain. But God, we know that you ain't dead, you're alive, because we spoke to you this morning, God. When we woke up, oh God, we gave you a praise, oh God. We woke up, we saluted you, oh God, the one who holds the keys to our future. We thank you, Father, for everything right now in the name of Jesus. Remember everyone under the sound of my voice, God. Look upon the young kids, oh God. Look upon those of us that are getting up in age, God. We pray for fresh strength, oh God. We pray for unity and camaraderie in the name of Jesus. Your word says that young men, I call you because you're strong. And, young, and old men, I call you because you know the way. We thank you, Father, that we are able to parlay and to teach somebody some of the things that we learned about you, God. We learned that you are a good God. We learned that you are merciful, God. We learned that you are holy. Hallelujah. Holiness unto the Lord. My God, we're going to get out of the way that you might have your way this day, oh God. We come in expectation. Looking for you, oh God, to speak to our hearts, God. Speak to our minds, God. To help us, oh God, to put things in the place that need to be in place. And to remove those things that need to be out of the way, God. So even now, have your way, God. Remember all of these ministers on the roster. Trust them one by one, oh God. For you, only you know, God, what they stand in need of, God. Remember those that wanted to be here today, that for whatever reason, oh God, they're not able, Father. We thank you that they're still in the ark of your safety, God. They're still in your hand. And my God, even now, God, we lift up, God, the man of God that you sent in our midst, God. 
We thank you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Your word said to know them that labor among you, God. And we lift up our pastor even right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you for the oil that's in this life, God. We thank you for the anointing that's on this life, God. We thank you for the word that you put deep down in this bosom, oh God. For heaven and earth shall pass away, but your word shall abide forever. We thank you, God, that he's a glory carrier. Hallelujah. We thank you that he's a glory carrier. My God, you don't place your glory anywhere, oh God. But we want to thank you, dear God, that we can feel your glory in this place, oh God. So help us, oh God, to remember, oh God, to always to lift up the man of God, to watch over him and his family in the name of Jesus. We know that the devil desired to sift them as we. But I thank you, Jesus, that you said you prayed for us a long time ago. That our faith will fail not. So we thank you today, God. Have your way, oh God. Touch the choirs, oh God. Touch whoever come before, oh God, to do any service, oh God, to make the service what it, it, it should be, oh God. Look upon the drummers, God. Look upon the musicians. My God, we just thank you, oh God, for allowing us to be in your house one more time. We know that ain't nobody mad but the devil. He's mad. And we're glad for the, the snare has broken and we have escaped because our help is in the name of the Lord. So we call upon you today, God. Even before the prayer line, we call upon your name, God, because we know that you'll come to our rescue anywhere, any place, and any time. So your people give you a shout today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, because we already got the victory. Because victory belongs unto you. And we thank you in the name of Jesus. In advance for that which you are about to do. In Jesus' name, somebody say. Somebody say. Somebody say. Amen, 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 amen. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. We thank God for our Elder Smalls. Amen. Taking the church to the throne of grace. Amen. We've asked that the Lord will continue to bless him as he continues to work in the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. At this time, we're going to hear from the, our choir. We're going to hear from the voices of the chapel choir. They're going to come and render their selection unto us. And after we hear from the voices of the chapel choir, we're going to hear the word of God from our Bishop Daru Bryan. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. We thank God today for the word of God. Amen. We thank God for our manservant for allowing the Lord to use him as he yields his vessel just to deliver the word today. Amen. Amen. So once again, we're going to hear from the voices of the chapel choir. And after we hear from the chapel choir, we'll hear the word of God from our Bishop Daru Bryan. Amen.
Jesus. How did I make it this far? To the valleys and over the hills. I know it had to be God. How did I make it to the storms? How did I make it to the rain? If you want to know just how I got here, it's so easy to explain. It was God's grace. It was God's grace. It was God's grace. It was God's grace. I made it this far. By the grace of God. It was God's grace. It was God's grace. It was God's grace. His amazing grace. I made it this far by the grace of God. Lord, I thank you for how you brought me, how you brought me through the night. Lord, you kept me and you never left me. You stood by my side. There was a time when I came so close. Old man Death, he tried to take me in. But the reason I'm here is that hard for me to see. In fact, it's so easy for me to explain. It was God's grace. It was God's grace. It was God's grace. It was God's grace. I made it this far. By the grace of God. I remember the time. I remember the time. There was a time. When I came so close, so the reason I'm here, it's not hard for me to see. In fact, it's so easy for me to explain. It was God's grace. It was God's grace. It was God's grace. I made it this far. By the grace of God, it was God's grace. It was God's grace. It was God's grace. His amazing grace. I made it this far. By the grace of God, I remember the time. When I strayed away, even though I knew the words, still I wouldn't obey. But God's grace and his mercy came to me and brought me, brought me all the way. It was God's grace. It was God's grace. It was God's grace. It was God's grace. I made it this far by the grace of God. It was God's grace. It was God's grace. It was God's grace. It was God's grace. I made it this far. Made it this far. I made it this far. It was God's grace. It was God's grace. It was God's grace. His amazing grace. I made it this far. I look grace of God. It was.
was God's grace. It was His grace that I'm still here. It was His grace that saved my soul. It was His grace that made me whole. Because of His grace, I'm cancer free. Because of His grace, I got close on my back. Because of His grace, I got food. On my table, I got shoes. On my feet, it was His grace that saved my soul. It was His grace that made me whole. Because of His grace, I'm still here. Without His grace, where would I be? I might be dead, sleeping in my grave. I might be dead, sleeping in my grave. Because of His grace, I'm still here. In the Bible church, Bible church of Christ, I'm still here. Because of His grace, I'm still here. Because of His grace, I'm still here. It was His grace that saved my soul. It was God's grace. It was God's grace. It was God's grace. It was God's grace. I made it this far. By the grace of God, it was God's grace. It was God's grace. It was God's grace. It was God's grace. It was His grace that I'm still here. It was His grace. I'm still alive. It was His grace that saved my soul. It was His grace that made me whole. It was His grace that I'm still here. It was His grace that I'm still here. It was God's grace. 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 It was His grace. It was God's grace. It was His grace. It was God's grace. I made it this far. I'm grace of God. It was God's grace. God's grace. It was God's grace. It's God's grace. I made it this far. 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 By the grace. Of God, it was God's grace. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you know it was God's grace, will you please stand and give the Lord some glory? If it had not been for his grace and his mercy, where would we be? Personalize it. Where would you be if it had not been for God's unfailing grace? It was his grace that brought us to salvation. And it's his grace that keeps us in this path of salvation. That is reason to give him glory. 
That is the reason to give him honor and to give him praise. For there is none like our Lord. King of kings and Lord of lords. Most gracious, wonderful counselor, mighty God, the Prince of Peace. We thank the Lord for his presence and being here today. Let's give the choir another hand clap, please. Hallelujah. What an encouraging song. An uplifting song. It's like the Lord knows what to give us right at that very point. Thank you, Jesus. Let us please bow our heads in a word of prayer as we lift holy hands. Father, we thank thee in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Jesus, who is indeed your son, the lamb slain before the foundation of this world. Father, we thank you for all things, O oh God. We thank you for your guidance, your wisdom. Lord, we thank you as you begin to orchestrate each movement. As you take full control, O oh God. Lord, as we sit to the side and allow you to take the wheel. You are the great conductor. You are the pilot. You are the chief. Oh God, we thank you for all things, oh God, as we just follow your direction. We humble ourselves before thee, oh God. Lord, I declare to know nothing but Jesus Christ and him crucified. But I ask that you just have your way right now, Father. As you have preeminence in this house. Lord, we invite you right now in the name of Jesus. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. Move in this place, Holy Spirit. Fill this place, Holy Spirit. Saturate us, Holy Spirit. Have your way, Holy Ghost. Purge us, O oh God. Cleanse us, O oh Lord, from all unrighteousness that we may resemble thee, Holy Ghost, the Father and the Son. We open our ears today, O oh God, and we incline our hearts that it may receive of thee today, O oh Lord. And we just welcome you once again as we bind the hands of the adversary who has neither part nor lot in this matter Satan, you are already defeated. Your tactics are no longer effective. We recognize your movement and we bind you according to the word of God. Satan, it is Lord that rebuked thee. The Lord Jesus rebuked thee. The scriptures give us the authority to bind and to loose. The Bible said, whatever we bind in earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever is loosened here on the earth shall be loosed in heaven. Father, in the name of Jesus, have your way. That your divine order be present in this place. In Jesus Christ's name, we worship, we praise. And we say, speak, Lord. Thy servants heareth thee. Speak, Lord. In Jesus' name. Speak to our heart. Speak to our mind. Speak to our soul. In the name of Jesus, speak unto our homes. Speak unto our children. Speak unto our spouse. Speak to the nation. Speak to the president. Speak to the foreign leaders. In the name of Jesus, speak, Lord. In Jesus' name. And let the church say amen. amen. And amen. 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 Hallelujah. Please greet someone before you have a seat.
Blessed be the name of the Lord. David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. How many of you glad about it on today? The Bible said, where there are two or three gathered together in his name, he is in the midst. Well, we appear to be more than two or three today. So we know that he is here. But a terrible thing it must be to be in what is called a house of worship and the presence of the Lord is not there. If you only knew how fortunate you are. It's one thing to know that the spirit of the living God lives and dwells inside of us. But it's also good to know when you are able to enter into a place and this ground is a holy ground. For this sanctuary is one that has been dedicated unto the Lord. That's why we reverence God's house. Not that God is like you and I where we have to have a place with a roof, windows, and doors. But yet this place has been sanctified. Set apart. That the word of God and his work may go forth. It's a house of refuge. The Bible lets us know that if it's only through human intellect and through our energy and self-efforts that we build a house, we labor in vain. But if the Lord build the house, he is the great architect. He's the one that laid the blueprint. And if we don't deviate from his blueprint, we will continue to see many great exploits being done in this house. Are you ready to see more exploits being done in God's house? For that reason, the Bible said there be any sick among you call unto the elders that they also may pray the prayer of faith. Therefore, we understand that if we walk in agreement with God's word, that God honors his word. Whatever it is that it seems that you're going through, you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to fret. You don't have to be afraid. The scripture says, neither let your heart be dismayed. We have a present help in Christ Jesus. Because he's a present help means he's a right now help. You ever been in a situation where you needed someone right now? No, I don't need you to put me on hold. I don't need you to text me saying, you know, give me a few. I need you right now. Some of you, that's how you got here because you had a right now situation and God showed up right at that given moment. When it seemed that others have given up on you, turned their backs on you, but yet Jesus showed up. It's very similar to the story of the Good Samaritan. The Bible says that the priest walked right on by. Surely the man is wounded. The priest would stop by. But yet the priest goes right on by, even crosses over to the other side of the street. Similar to that of the religious order today, they're more concerned about themselves than they are concerned about souls. The Bible said that even the Levite walked right on by. The Levi, according to Jewish custom, represented law, governing. It's one thing when the priest turns his back, then the governments also turn their backs. And it seems that we deal with the systematic or systemic racism. 
when we deal with the injustice, when it seems that even social services aren't even there for our assistance anymore, or what little they decide to give unto us, is still not enough. So when it seemed that the priest no longer can and the government no longer can, I thank God that Jesus still answers prayer. That regardless in how society and the times take us on this roller coaster trip, up, down, up, down, look at the economy. In the various ways of the economy. Amen. When you look at the pestilence that's in the land, the famine, natural disasters, all of these things that are transpiring as seasons seem to change. But regardless in the many facets of the seasons, God is still constant. He does not change. He is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Therefore, he's still in the healing business. Even when science don't have a cure, God still heals. When it seems a pandemic take out the lives of so many of our loved ones. But yet God still preserved you. It wasn't that you had better treatment than the next man. It may not appear that we were even more special than the next person. But because of God's unmerited favor. Because of his grace. The mercy that the Bible says endure forever. When the grocery stores are running out of Infamil and Similac, the Bible says there's new mercy every day. God knows how to replenish. But yet men seem like they're suffering lack. As if COVID wasn't enough, now they got something called monkeypox. <laughs> One time there was mad cow disease. All across the world, we see the plagues that yet God had permitted to happen. Somebody say, how is it that you can say God permitted to happen? Because nothing happens without him knowing. If he's omniscient, if he's all powerful, nothing just happens. It's not happenstance, it's not coincidence. Why, Lord? These things we see that even Jesus spake to his disciples concerning. We see even in the prophets of old, the warnings. The Bible lets us know because sin has abound. I know the words say grace also abound. But what we find in these last days, the love of many have waxed cold. Not just the love towards one another, but the love that people used to have for God is no longer there. They have a form of godliness, but deny the very power thereof. It's not they didn't have a knowledge of God, but they chose rather to be defiant to God's commands, his statutes and his ordinance. But the word I want to share with you, regardless of what it is, the Bible lets us know there will come a time of restoration. A time where 
we will be restored. The scripture says the whole creation is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. But it's tragic that things often have to get worse before they get better. Somebody said, no, it can't get worse than this. If you only knew how bad I have it right now. It can't get worse than this. With all that I'm going through, I don't know how I'm going to even feed those in my household. With all that I'm going through, how am I going to take care of the medical expense? With all that I'm going through, my job is not even promised right now. With all that I'm going through within my body, how is it that you're going to tell me that it may get worse before it get better? The Bible said the race isn't given to the swift. Don't matter how fast you run. Nor to the battle to the strongest. But unto the one that's able to endure until the end. Those who know how to be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the things of God. Those who know how to be rooted in the foundation of God's word. Got your mind made up. I shall not be moved. Satan will not move me. His demonic kingdom will not move me. People will not move me. Church folk won't move me. Or is it better to say so-called church folk? Everybody that proclaims righteousness isn't righteous. Everybody that looked like a lamb may not be a lamb. Look down at the feet. You might see a paw down there instead of a hoof. The wolf often lurking around in sheep clothing camouflages himself, calls himself friend. Watch out for those who call themselves friends. Who is my friend? Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. I want to turn to the book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel, a prophet who was carried away into Babylonian captivity. He had a message from the Lord, not simply unto Judah only or even the other ten kingdoms, but yet his message was unto the entire house of Israel, encouraging them while they are dealing with Oppression, bondage, letting them know that if they would walk upright in God's word, that God would manifest himself unto them. The Bible lets us know in chapter 2 of Ezekiel that the Lord referred to him as son of man. It's as if the Lord reminds him that regardless of the visions that you see, Ezekiel, you're still just the son of man. Sometimes God has to remind us so we don't get haughty, get arrogant, conceited, walking in pride, thinking ourselves something when we are not. It's a humbling experience. I prefer a humbling experience with God reminding me that I'm just the son of man versus the one that Nebuchadnezzar had. Where you find yourself in a field and you have changed in your appearance entirely. 
where your nails look like claws and it appears that feathers are growing out from you to where you're unrecognizable and people view you as a beast till your kingdom is snatched from you. Yes, Lord, I'd rather just be known as the son of man. The Bible tells us in the New Testament that the apostle Paul, he too was humbled by the Lord. So there was sent unto him a messenger from Satan to buffet him in his flesh, to keep him from exalting himself above measure. It's interesting how God warns us to walk in humility. It sounds easy to say, be humble. Or a man says, sit down and be humble. But yet, it's a hard thing to do. If one is receiving accolades over and over again, or if you're one who have made great accomplishments, there's a tendency of you start giving yourself credit instead of God. Israel at one point found themselves just like that. They began to push God to the side. When Moses went to the mount to receive the commandments of God, and because he tarried there with God in the mountain while he was there in that elevated place, communing and in fellowship with God, the people who were delivered out of bondage, getting restless, desired to make their own God. Aaron began to take the earrings out of the men's ears, the gold, the jewelry, and Aaron, according to scripture, says that he put it in the fire and this cow came out. How does that happen, Aaron? But yet even Aaron as a priest, a man who knew God, but yet he allowed the people to sway him to do otherwise. Why is it that sometimes we find ourselves in a place where we allow people to intimidate us, where we compromise, when we know what God's words say, and we find ourselves doing the opposite? Thank God for grace. People walking in an attitude, thinking that I can create me a God instead of worshiping the God. To where God becomes furious with a righteous indignation. Repenting he ever made man. But thank God for intercessors. Intercessors like Moses. Who says, Lord, if you remove them and destroy them here in this place. He said, hey, don't take, take my name out of the book of life. Take my name out. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that this man has such a passion for souls that he said, if you destroy them, Lord, then take my name out of your book of life. And I don't know if I love souls that much, Lord, why wouldn't you take my name out? Not sure I'm there yet. Lord, I've tried ministering to them folk. They made their mind up. I ain't trying to go to hell for nobody. But the Bible said Moses was the meekest man in all the earth. There was none like Moses. That's why my heart dropped for him when the Lord said, you can't even go into the promised land. Because God will be sanctified. He will be sanctified before his people. Because the word lets us know like people, like priests. If those of us who are called clergy, those of us who are in leadership, if we defy God's word, if we defy God's ordinance, then what do you think the people are going to do? 
when many times people, they follow by example, not so much by what you say, they watch your life. But if they see your life is a contradiction to what you're preaching, Jesus made it clear. He just said, you're hypocrites. But we're in a generation where folk want to be politically correct. They don't want to offend nobody. Say that we're in what they call a cancel culture. The Bible said, cry aloud and spare not. Don't matter who they are. Don't matter what office they have. Even if it means that we are going to be denied of benefits because we take a stand. I ain't worried about what the benefits man can give. The world lets me know my father have cattle on a thousand hills. They steak dinners for life in my father's kingdom. Why settle for just a few things that locusts sing and eat away? that moth can eat away, that rust can take away. We must remain in humility. The Bible lets us know here that Ezekiel, who the Lord identified as son of man, he says, stand upon thy feet. He gives him instruction. He said, if you stand on your feet, then what will happen? He said, I'll do what? Speak unto thee. First, I need to know I have your attention. Stand up. And I'll speak. You imagine God saying, I'm going to speak to you. I have something I want to share with you. I want to give you insight. I want to give you revelation. I want to give you information that's going to preserve not only your life, but the lives of those that are held captive with you. The Bible says... That when he stood and God began to speak, that the spirit entered into him when he spake unto me. See what happened? As the word of Christ is being spoken, as the word of God is being propagated, it creates the avenue or the opportunity for the Holy Spirit to show up. It's the same thing that happened at Kania's house. The Bible lets us know that Cornelius was warned by an angel to go send for one who's called Simon Peter. Because Simon Peter had words that would preserve Cornelius and his house. He didn't say he had money. He didn't say he was coming with food because of the famine. He got words. Those words that he's going to share is going to create an open door for the spirit of God to come in, even though they were called Gentiles. Can we turn there real briefly? Let's go to Acts. Acts chapter 10. Acts Chapter 10. In Acts chapter 10, we're going to look at verse 21. After Peter had his vision, and he's now coming there on his way to the house of Cornelius. Prior getting there, it said he went down to the men which were sent unto him from Cornelius. Verse 21, chapter 10, verse 21. And said, Behold, I am Cornelius. And said, Behold, I am he whom ye seek. What is the cause wherefore you are come? Peter saying, Why are y'all calling me? I'm the one you're seeking for. Why are you calling me? And they said, Cornelius. The centurion, a just man, and one that do what? Fear God. Although Cornelius had not the Holy Spirit at this time, but yet he and his house did what? Fear God. That's the start. The Bible said, and of good report, among who? All the nation of who? The Jews. So to the best of his ability, he walked like how he talked. We see here, he said he was what? Warned. 
That was a warning. A warning came to Cornelius because there was something that God needed Cornelius to know and to be filled with. He said he was warned from God by an holy angel to send for thee into his house and to hear what? Words from who? Of thee. But why couldn't the angel do it? The angel was holy. It wasn't the angel's assignment to do what God had commissioned his people to do. There's some things we want God to do supernaturally all by himself when God rather chooses to work through broken vessels just like us. Those who humble themselves before the hand of the mighty God. He was warned by God through an angel to send for Peter to hear words. Words have power. A dunamis power. The words you say that come from your mouth if you only knew the power of your words. I may have shared this as an example before. The father was giving his son an example, an illustration of how powerful his words are, whether positive or negative. He gives him about 10 nails and say, go nail these in the wood fence in the backyard. After he nailed all the nails in the fence, he said, go back now and remove all the nails. So I said, what? I just did all that work, and now you tell me to go back and take them out? It don't make sense, but the father was giving him an illustration. He said, now that you've taken the nails out, you see the holes? He said, yes. Let's get some wood filler and let's cover the holes. He puts the wood filler on there. But with the wood filler, you can still see where the holes are. So he says, I need you to sand it down. So now he's sanding it down. All of this work to repair the damage that he'd done to the wood. And now once he sanded it, he painted it. And he said, look, can you see where the holes were? He said, no, I don't see any of the holes. So what's the point? He said, let me take you to the backside of that fence. And when he went to the back of the fence, he could see all the holes, regardless of how he tried to clean it up, regardless of how he tried to fix and repair, but the damage was still there. That's the effect our words have. Sorry doesn't erase what you said. It may free you from the guilt because of what you've done, but many times, even when people forgive, they still don't forget it. And it has an impact on the relationship going forward. When the next person come, and you say, yeah, I've been through this before. I've heard those sweet nothings before. I heard those lies or promises before. And I know what the outcome is. The damage caused by words. But yet, we see the words that came here unto Kenia's house was going to be words that was going to bring life, not death. When God sows his word, it's like a seed. And when it's planted in the right ground, it produces a harvest. Not only a blade of green come up out of the ground, but eventually it either yields a flower or it yields a fruit. The Bible lets us know that when Peter opened his mouth in verse 34 of the same chapter of Acts, then Peter opened his mouth and said, of a truth, I perceive that God is what? No respect of persons. But in every nation, he that feareth him other words, reverence him. And worketh what? Righteousness. Worketh what? Righteousness. Righteousness, Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach unto any people. But he said, in every nation that fear him and worketh righteousness is what? Accepted with him. 
So in order to be accepted by God, you have to reverence God. Not only reverence, but you also have to work in righteousness. Doing that which is right by God's word, his standard, and by his ordinance. The Bible tells us in verse 44. He says, while Peter yet spake, what? These words. The Holy Ghost did what? On all of them that did what? So simply when Peter spoke, when Peter used the authority that was given to him, when Peter utilized the keys of the kingdom, we see that the Holy Spirit showed up and he manifested himself inside Gentiles because a word was spoken. Sometimes all you need is a word. You don't need another handout. You need a word. You don't need another hug. You need a word. You don't need nobody but a word. You chasing behind folk looking for your answer when the Bible lets us know if we are look unto Christ Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. If you hunger and thirst after him, he said you shall be filled. But what are you filling yourself with? What are you eating? What table are you eating from? Everything that's advertised as food is not good for you. Some of these things, they got injected in our food. Causing deformities, causing high blood pressure, cholesterol problems, sugar diabetes. It's not all the time genetic. But what are you eating? Don't they say you are what you eat? You keep eating junk. Guess what's going to happen? It's going to manifest itself in your life. And while you blaming the devil, it had nothing to do with the devil. You couldn't refrain from eating all that junk. You open the door for the devil. What's your name? Junk food. Obesity. Gluttony. Greed. McDonald's. Chicken nugget. 20 piece. Only $5. Before COVID. <laughs> the power of a word. When the word is spoken, the Holy Spirit show up. Back to Ezekiel. Oh my God, we won't get through this all day. <laughs> Ezekiel chapter 2. We only hit the second verse. Once again, being repetitious, and the Spirit entered into me when he spake. Once again, we see God being the same yesterday, today, and forever. He spake, and the Spirit shows up. And set me upon my feet. But I thought he was already on his feet. Maybe he was slain. Well, I'm not going to read too deep into it. But what I do see is that he said that I heard him. That spake unto me. And he said unto me, Son of man, I send thee to the children of Israel. He probably got excited. Well, that's my peoples. But then we see, he said, they are a rebellious nation. They have rebelled against me. They and their fathers have transgressed or sinned against me, even unto this very, even while in captivity. That captivity was to bring them to an understanding. It was a type of punishment. Hoping that they would correct themselves from their evil ways, but they are still, even to this day, rebellious. The Bible said rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. The word says, for they are an impotent children, stiff-hearted, but yet I do send thee unto them, 
and thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord, who? God. And they, whether they will hear, whether they forbear. And he said, because they still are a rebellious house. But yet shall they know there has been what? A prophet among them. He said, whether they hear it, whether they forbear it. God already knows. We say in his omniscience that he's all-knowing. He already knows that they're going to be those that are going to reject the word. But he sends the prophet on the assignment anyhow. Why would God send me somewhere if he knows that they're going to reject it anyhow? Because at least they get an opportunity to hear. And they can't say on the day of judgment, I did not know. Because every man, every woman, boy and girl, will have an opportunity to hear the word and make a decision for themselves. They can't ride on the skirt tail of mama or papa. They got to make the decision for themselves. As much as you want your child to be saved and hoping that because of your salvation, that would make them saved automatically. No don't work that way as individuals we have to give an account of the things we say and do in this body salvation is personal you have to accept him for yourself all we can do is intercede like Moses did but Lord I still want you to keep my name in that book of life but I'll intercede for them but they got to come to the acknowledgement for himself. The Bible said no man can come unto the Lord except he first do what? He draw them. How does he draw them? Through the preaching of his word. The more you sow the word, eventually you'll see the harvest of your efforts. But you got some folk that give up too fast. Well, you know they take after their mama's side of the family. Well, you know they father, he ain't about nothing. They just like they father. <laughs> Give up too easy. Is that the same attitude when you're on your secular job? When you don't get it right the first time, you just quit? No. You try your best to get it right. Then they say, you know what? You made too many mistakes. We're going to have to uh, make a decision here. And I hope you have a union rep or something because your job is at jeopardy. Then what do you do? You start getting it right. But yet, when we mess up, and when we see that we sow our seeds hoping to see a harvest, and we don't see all we give up so quick, what happened to the same resilience, the same persistence? What happened to the attitude that says, I'm not going to stop sowing this word until I see a change take place? Did anybody like that? There used to be folk like that. They go to the same corner every week, preaching that same corner. Even the dope dealers know, oh, man, there they go again. Can't wait till they leave so we can take our corner back. But what happened? It's like we got lackadaisical. It's okay. I tried. I'm going to go somewhere else now. Did God tell you to go somewhere else? You said that was your assignment. It's funny how people change the assignment that God gives them based on what the phone call is and who it's coming from. If it seemed to be advantageous for them or if they are opportunists and they see, oh, man, this is like it could be a good thing. But I thought you said God told you... Well, I, I, got, uh, mm, I had a revelation. <laughs> Folk better watch how they line on God. God told me to say this. God told me to say that. When you go into the Old Testament, we see God speaking to his prophets. He ain't just speaking to everybody all the time. He's speaking to his prophets. 
And that was Moses doing, really, because what happened, the children of Israel said, we don't want to hear him no more. Moses, you go speak to him, and then when you get the information, then share it with us. But even after Moses would come back, he would have such a glow on him. The presence of God would be so heavy on him, they still were bothered by the presence of God. Put a veil on you, Moses. Even in the New Testament, you don't see God just speaking to everybody. The New Testament, you see him speaking more by his spirit. When God speaking, it was in reference to his son and concerning those that were with him at that moment, saying, hey, this is my son, hear him. Regardless whether you think you're seeing this transfiguration of Moses and Elijah, the prophets, and the Old Testament and the law, but yet there's one greater than Moses, and his name is Jesus. Yeah. Hear him. And Jesus speaks by the Spirit of God. That's why the Bible said the Spirit speak expressly. He said, he that hath the ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying until he didn't say what God is saying to you, but the Spirit is saying to the church. You got too many people that are lying on God. God don't like it. He don't. Especially when you try to speak judgment on behalf of God when God didn't say it then that judgment will come right back like a boomerang effect and hit you. And you wonder why you're suffering. Why your house is dealing with conflict. You brought judgment onto yourself. But yet Israel were these impotent children. Impudent children. And the Bible says here in verse 6 of Ezekiel chapter 2, And thou, son of man, be not afraid of them. Neither be afraid of what? So wait a minute. You said words have power. When God spake, the spirit came in and I was lifted up. When God's word was spoken, the Holy Spirit came in even unto men who didn't have the Holy Spirit. But yet, this house that you're sending me to speak to, they also possess words. But their words have no impact on you. And God has to remind Ezekiel concerning that thing. He says, and thou, son of man, be not afraid of them. Neither be afraid of their words. Though it may appear to be as briars and as thorns be with thee, and thou dost dwell among scorpions, be not afraid of their words, nor be dismayed at their looks, although they be a rebellious house. These words that he was speaking in regards of brides and thorns and scorpions are words that they were used to describe demonic attack. Even though these demonic attacks are coming from this rebellious group of people who claim to be the children of God, although they were rebellious, he said their words have no power over you. When they try to sow doubt in your life. When they sow unbelief in your life. When they try to tell you you'll never be nothing. You don't have what it take. Your mother wasn't nothing, so I know you won't be nothing. Regardless of what they say unto you. When they even question you and say, you're not a child of God. Who called you to be a prophet? Who called you to preach the word? Who called you to be our judge? The Lord said, I told you they were rebellious. Stiff-necked folk. He said in verse 7, And thou shalt speak my words unto them, whether they will hear whether they forbear, for they are most rebellious. But I say unto thee, son of man, hear what I say unto thee. Be not thou rebellious like that rebellious house. Why would he have to tell his prophet that? He poured his spirit into his prophet. He's speaking unto his prophet. 
He already told his prophet, don't be afraid of them and their words. But the Lord also knows how contagious the words of darkness are. He said, don't be like, don't be conformed to them. But be transformed in the renewing of your mind. Listen to my words. Eat my word. Taste of my word. Taste and see that the Lord is good. This is the diet you need to be on. It ain't about being on no keto diet. Low carbs diet. But get into the diet of my word. Eat of me. Taste. It's like sweetness. He said, don't be like that rebellious house. But he said, open thy mouth and eat that I give thee. That's beautiful. I think about when my children, when they were small, in the high chair, it's time to eat. You got the baby there. You got the food on the spoon. Open your mouth. <laughs> See, y'all didn't have no children like that, right? <laughs> Open your mouth. <laughs> when they close their eyes and everything. <laughs> Open your mouth. And then you try to push it and they blowing bubbles. <laughs> They see everybody else eating by themselves. They want to eat by themselves. <laughs> but they're not ready for that yet. But then when they do open their mouth and they taste, before they can swallow, the mouth is open again for the next spoonful. And it's through that they learn how to eat. Sometimes the Lord has to spoon feed us to a certain point. Until you know how to eat for yourself. He said, open your mouth. And as he opened his mouth, he said, and eat that I give thee. Don't just hold it in your mouth. Now, I was talking about babies, but sometimes when folk get older, they can get stubborn too. Remember trying to feed some of the elderly in our family. They got to the point they didn't like it. They didn't want it. But I'm like, you need this. Because if you don't eat, your body won't be properly nourished. If you're not properly nourished, you will die. You'll get sick. Infirmity will come in. So in the natural, also in the spirit. It behooves us to eat from the Lord's table. Eat his unadulterated word. You don't have to add anything unto it. We don't need no additives, no preservatives. You don't need no salt, no pepper. You don't need nothing on it. Just eat. The pure word. Many times when I turn on the TV, they got it diluted. When you hear this message come from many other places, be like, what is this they're talking about? That ain't the gospel. That ain't going to save nobody. But folk are so concerned about getting big congregations. It's not about how many in number. But what is the quality of your congregation? I remember hearing Bishop, as he would speak, say, we got a holy church. He wasn't speaking about the quantity, but he was speaking in regard to the quality of the saints of this house. They are holy people, and that's what God desires. Be ye holy as I am holy, saith the Lord. The scripture goes on and say, And when I looked, behold, a hand was sent unto me, a low, a roll of a book was therein. And he spread it before me, and it was written within and without, and there was written there lamentations and mourning and woe. But then what else did the Lord say unto him in chapter 3? I'm sorry, y'all thought that was the end. We're not going much further. But moreover, he said unto me, son of man, eat. 
that thou findest, eat this robe and go speak unto the house of Israel. You might say, he wanted him to eat it. Is the Lord talking literally here to the man of God? The Lord delivered it unto him. He was speaking literally later on when he told him to go make a barley cake with man's dung. Oh, y'all don't know about that. And he said, oh, you're asking a hard thing, Lord. Then the Lord said, okay, I'll soften it for you. Use cow dung. <laughs> a hard task is the job of the prophet. Then I need you to lay on your side for so many. Then turn on the other side. If you read the prophets and what they had to endure, and some of them, he said, no, you can't even have a wife. You can't even have any offspring. He would teach them how to walk in subjection unto his law so that they could have an understanding concerning how Israel had defiled herself and how he was so displeased. So this is a light thing to eat the roll. The Bible said, and he said, go speak unto the house of Israel. So I opened my mouth, and he caused me to eat that roll. It's not a roll that's buttered down and honey drizzled over it. We're talking about the word. And so what happened? He says in verse 3, and he said unto me, son of man, cause thy belly to eat and fill thy bowels with this roll that I give thee. Then did I eat it, and it was in my mouth as honey for what? Sweetness. How many of you ever read the word of God and found it to be sweet? It's just what the doctor ordered. It's right what I needed at that moment. I didn't have to wait for Sunday to hear a message. But when I opened up the word, as hard as it was to pick up the Bible, as hard as it was to open the scriptures, but when I sat down and began to read and meditate on his goodness and his mercy and his grace, how my heart was overjoyed. Joy began to move within my heart and mind. How good the old Campbell's commercial said, mmm, mmm, good. I know there are many authors out there, but there are none like those who the Holy Spirit was the motivator behind their pen. Talking about the scriptures. The Bible says, and he said unto me, son of man, go get thee unto the house of Israel. And once again, speak what? My words unto them. He said they're not even a people of a strange speech. In other words, they don't speak a different language. Nor is it a hard language whose words you don't even understand. He said, surely had I sent thee unto them, they would have hearkened unto thee. Why does it seem sometimes it's easier to speak and minister unto those who don't know God and they receive it at once. But then those of us who feel like we know a little something, our heads are so hard. We are sit right in here, the message being preached, and we say, that won't for me. I hope they listen to this, Lord. Hope they listening to it. Even as the minister, the word applies to me even more so. The word lets me know I got to be first partaker of the fruit. It's God's way of even reminding me as the minister to not get comfortable where I am. To also not get lackadaisical. But to always continue to press for more and more that I might climb and go to higher heights in him. We know how to be greedy for things of this world. How many of you are greedy for the things of the Lord? Anybody there? 
want to be there? God, do something say, Lord, I want more of this. That's why it was so hard to get folk out of the sanctuary when service was over. We would have to start cutting lights out and making those announcements. You don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. My wife would be like, no, my husband got to go home. People are greedy for more of God. God, well, you just healed this person that was sick. Well, what are you going to do today? Maybe you'll heal this person that got the broken arm. Or maybe this person that's dealing with cancer in stage four, you're going to wipe the cancer out. You're going to curse the reproach that came upon them. Lord, what are you going to do today? You're going to allow scales to fall off somebody's eyes. Lord, maybe you're going to do something so miraculous that the folk across the sidewalk are going to say, what do we got to do to get inside here? He's a God of so many wonders. But we limit him because of the limitations of our faith. What are you eating today? The Lord said, but this house of Israel would not hearken unto thee. Why? He said, because they won't even hearken unto me. Now, as a man and a God, as a minister, all right, Lord, you said they're not going to listen to you. Why do you think they're going to listen to me? This is what he's telling the prophet. They won't hearken unto me. Even to the point where Israel got to a place where they didn't want to hear from the prophet no more. They wanted to be like all the other nations. We don't need a theocracy. Give us a king. But your women will have to work in the confectionery. Your men will have to be enlisted in their armies. Your children will have to be their servants. We still want to be like everybody else. But I thank God the Bible Church of Christ ain't going to be like everybody else. We're going to make a difference. Because he's looking for a man to stand in the gap. He's looking for a woman to stand in the gap. He's looking for some children that say we don't have to be like all the other kids in our school because I'm a saved child of God. I'm going to make a stand it when I go to my school. Do you know who you are? You are the children of a king. Do you know that you're royalty? God called us to a higher standard. Don't get comfortable being like everybody else. I want what they got. They ain't got nothing compared to what God got. We measure ourselves by ourselves. Instead of letting God, instead of letting Christ be that example. I strive to be like Christ. Paul said, follow me as I do what? Follow Christ. If you don't know how to follow Christ, then I understand why you have to follow those who are called leadership. But when you can get to the place where you see things in the spirit and not looking after the flesh of people, then you can say, well, Christ can be that example. That's who I want to be like. I want to be like Jesus. Not simply just because of the glory's sake, but because I knew how Jesus was able to suffer persecution and still maintain a standard. People were able to spit in his face, and he was still upholding standard. Jesus never embarrassed his father. How many times have we been embarrassed, God? Well, Lord, that was four days ago. That don't count, do it? Or maybe that was last night, Lord. Do do, do that count? I I, I went to the altar. I asked you to forgive me. Some of you asking for forgiveness every single hour of the day. You know, in our judicial system, the penalty is heavier if they look at the crime as being premeditated versus it just happened. What we understand is that there are some of us, not everyone, 
I'm not pointing no fingers, and if I'm looking in your direction, don't mean I'm looking at you. <laughs> but if I stepped on your toe, you can holler, ouch, we ain't going to judge you. You premeditate your sin. You already know what you're going to do even when you leave here today. You know it ain't right by God's sight. You know he ain't pleased with that. But what happened? You do it anyway. Well, God is so full of grace and mercy. I'll just pray and he'll forgive me and I'll start all over the next day. The Bible says God is not mocked. Whatsoever man sow, that shall he also reap. You sow unto the spirit, you reap everlasting life. But if you sow unto the flesh, you're going to reap what? Corruption. Bring it to a close. So he says, this house of Israel, he said, they're not going to hearken unto you. They haven't hearkened unto me. For all the house, they are impudent and hard-hearted. Behold, I have made thy face strong against their faces. And thy forehead strong against their foreheads. As an adamant, harder than flint. Have I made thy forehead? Fear them not, neither be dismayed at their looks, though they be a rebellious house. He says, I have made your head harder than theirs. You didn't know God had some hard-headed preachers, right? <laughs> Ready to go to battle. Like those on the gridiron who got on their helmets, their mouthpiece. Because they know they're getting ready to collide. Yeah. It may be a, a, con, a, a what they call it, a contusion. <laughs> My head's getting ready to hit so hard against their head. But I'm not going to fear them that come against me because the Bible let me know, greater is he that is within me than those that are against me. I'm going to still preach, proclaim, and speak the word of God. That's what he's looking for you and I. That we proclaim a lifestyle of holiness wherever we go. That even if they don't hear the words from our mouth, they recognize the spirit we carry. That we carry the very presence of God wherever we go. When I go to my job, I brought the presence of God there. When I open my door at home, I brought the presence of God there. When I come into his house. I bring the presence of God in his house. I ain't got to worry about when I get there if God's presence is there. Because as long as he's in me, I bring his presence wherever I go. Do you carry the presence? Do you know the presence you carry? Do you know the power you carry? Feed the power you carry. Feed the power with his word. Let his word be a lamp unto thy pathway and a light unto thy feet. His word makes all the difference. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. That's what we live by. That's what we stand on. That's what we preach. The word of God. We're not worried about who don't like it. When you got a hard head, you keep preaching the truth anyhow. Why you keep preaching? We told you we don't like that message. I got a hard head. I'm sorry. Call me Mr. Flintstone. Folk knocking on your door. All that babbling. All that corrupt communication. evil communication trying to detour you from the very place where God planted you I know that God is planting me here do you know that do you know that God is planting you here do you know that God got to work for you here why are you going to allow somebody to convince you otherwise trust God in due season you'll reap if you faint not don't worry about what everybody else is doing don't worry about what the world is saying. Don't worry about what the news is telling you. We don't have to fear. Restoration is coming. 
We just got to hold on a little while longer. And we just trust the Lord and we look over the hill. Oh, look at there. I can see the breaking of day. Weeping man may endure for a night, but joy is coming in the morning. I see joy knocking on my door. I see joy on his way. Hallelujah for joy. The joy of the Lord is our strength. He keeps us. He encourages us. And he strengthens us. That's why I don't give up on him. That's why you can't give up on him. But we got to continue to hold on. Hold on. It's not a season to be fearful and faint at heart. Just hold on a little longer. Your breakthrough is coming. Your breakthrough is coming. It's coming. It's coming. He's not done. He's not done with you. He's not finished with you. Trust him. Bless him. Don't wait for the battle to be over, but shout now. The breaking of day is coming. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Amen. We thank God for the word of God. Amen. We praise him for the word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. At this time, let us all please stand. Once again, we thank God for the word of God. Amen. 
We thank God for our Bishop Daru delivering the word of God. Amen. We pray that you would continue, amen, just to read the word of God on during the week, amen, and let the words meditate in your heart, amen. At this time, we'll have our announcements by our sister, Tony King. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord again. It's truly a blessing to see each and every one of you one more time. Do we have any first-time visitors in our midst? If so, can you please stand so we can recognize you? God bless you. Welcome to the Bible Church of Christ. Our doors are open unto you. And please come back and fellowship with us once again. Thank you. These are the days and times for services here at the Bible Church of Christ. Sunday school begins 10 a.m. on Zoom as well as in the chapel. Our worship service begins at 12 o'clock on Zoom as well as in the chapel. We have Wednesday night prayer service on Zoom, which begins at 7 p.m., and that's on Zoom only. The call-in number for the Zoom services is 929-205-6099, and the Zoom ID number is 325-896-624. We have Wednesday midday prayer here in our headquarters location from 12 to 2 p.m. If you desire to come and pray and beseech the Lord for yourself, join our midday prayer on Wednesdays here in our chapel. Wednesday is also a day of fasting. Then on Friday nights, we have joy service, which begins here in the chapel at 7 p.m., as well as on our YouTube channel. The Bible Church of Christ has a bookstore which is located here in headquarters. These are the hours for the bookstore, Monday and Thursdays from 10 to 5.30, Tuesdays and Wednesdays from 10 to 8.30, Fridays from 10 to 8 p.m., and Saturdays from 10 to 5. The bookstore is also open immediately after service on Sundays. The website for the bookstore is the bccbookstore.com. We have a theological institute located here at the Bible Church of Christ. We have a class for the new convert as well as for advanced studies. To learn more about our theological institute, the website is bccti.org. And to learn more about the ministry of the Bible Church of Christ, you can visit that website at thebiblechurchofchrist.org. The Sunday School Department has a fun day at Quasi Amusement Park, which is going to be held on July the 16th. If there is anyone interested in still going, they have started a second bus to Quasi Park. And in order for them to maintain that bus, they need 40, 54 people. They have 44 at this time, and there's a remaining eight seats available. So if anyone still wants to go to Quasi Park, you must see our sister Teresa Fulmore with a deposit in order to hold your seats. You can see her immediately after our service. All those who 
have been mailing their tithes and offerings to our Mount Vernon location. Please send them here to headquarters. The address is 1358 Morris Avenue, Bronx, New York, 10456. Those of us that use the parking lot, please, when there are no more spaces and you have to park in the middle, please pull your vehicle all the way in to the parking lot. Sometimes people don't pull all the way in and there's still available space. So if you're gonna park in the middle, please pull your vehicle all the way in. Our services are streamed as well as on social media. They have pictures of the congregation. If you do not wish to have your picture put on social media, please see our sister, Vinette Cleckley. She's not here today. This way they can search for your picture and not have it on social media. Masks are still required here at the Bible Church of Christ and must be worn at all times while in the building. Please remember there is no eating or drinking permitted in our chapel. Children are not allowed to play with any pencils, pens, or markers while in the, while in the chapel. Small children must be accompanied by an adult when entering into the bookstore. Tithe and authoring, offering envelopes are available. If you need an envelope at the time of offering, please raise your hand and our deacons will give you an offering envelope. Please print your information clearly on the envelope, first and last names. You can also pay tithes and offerings online through PayPal or tithe.ly. Today, our sister Dorinda Townsend recognizes birthdays for the month of May. Our prayer list continues to remain the same. However, please add our sister Katora Harper to your prayers. And we'd like to uh, recognize that our brother Micah Bryant was feeling better today and he is in service with us. Our uh, home the homegoing service for our brother Gregory Chisholm is tomorrow and the viewing is from 4 to 6 p.m. and the service is 6 p.m. The location is Greater Zion Baptist Church on 127th Street and 8th Avenue. If anyone uh, needs transportation to uh, the service tomorrow evening, the van will be available. Please be here at five o'clock sharp. And on a happier note, our sister, Nigel Bryant, graduated cum laude from North Carolina State University. <laughs> Sister Niger, can you stand up so we can see you? God bless you. Job well done. I know she was surprised. <laughs> and anyone else that is graduating this year Please give me your name and I will recognize you as well. We're not a respecter of persons here at the Bible Church of Christ. So I know we have other graduates. Our uh, sister Roxanne Goodley also graduating with honors, special honors as well. Congratulations to you, sister Roxanne. And that's all that I have in the way of announcements. Please govern yourselves accordingly. God bless you again. And remember that I love you. God bless.
praise the Lord. Praise the Lord again. Surely we thank God for another birthday celebration. Um, we are celebrating for the month of May. When you hear your name, please come up and um, receive your card. Amen. Okay. Sister Andrea Wood Brown. Sister Courtney, Courtney Young. Sister Joan Foster. Sister Melva Roachford. Okay. Um, Brother Judah Bryant. Brother Jeffrey Harper. Brother, Brother Ty Quees Plight. Sister Hannah Fillmore. Sister Roselda Morrison. Sister Tony Kennedy. Sister Chloe Carter. Deacon Randy Carter. And um, Brother Malachi Nixon. I know he's not here. Amen. Can we please stand as we um, begin to sing Happy Birthday to the Saints? Happy birthday to you. To God be all the glory. Amen. We thank God for all that he's done. Thank God for every part of the service. Thank God for uh, Minister Fumo being the ram in the bush. Amen. Amen. And for each and every one of you who makes the service what it is, You'll be surprised how your being here alters the service. It's not a matter whether someone saw you, but just your presence, because God knew what you needed. So the word will go sometimes a different way because a certain individual may have been here. It goes beyond my comprehension, because most of the time I don't know anything. I say that because sometimes people feel like, oh, well, maybe Bishop is speaking this because somebody told him this, that. No, I don't, I don't play that. If you only knew how many times somebody come and try to tell me something about I said, no, I don't want to hear it, and I walk away. And they get an attitude with me about it. <laughs> they say, but you, I, no, I don't want to hear it. Go somewhere with that. If it's not interfering with somebody's salvation, I don't want to hear it. Don't have time for gossip, backbiting, or for being two-faced, talking out of both sides of their mouth, just trying to stir up something. 
Don't they realize that's the work of the adversary to cause schism in God's house? To be the accuser of the brethren? It's not what God called us here for. But we are our brother's keeper. We ought to encourage one another. Help lift each other up. When someone's not here, you should be praying for that brother, that sister. You never know what warfare they're dealing with when they leave this house. But thank God for the effectual, fervent prayer of righteous men and women. The Bible said it availeth much. With that said, I want us to come together today at the altar, those who can. I know there's not enough space here for everybody to come to the altar, whether it be in your pew or standing behind your pew or standing behind the altar. But if you can come to the altar, we want to intercede. We want to bombard heaven with our prayers on today. And I want you not to come to the altar praying for yourself. I challenge you today. Pray for the ministry. Pray for the souls in the community. Pray for your friends, your neighbors. Pray for your enemies. Pray for them around the world. And you will find, as you're praying on behalf of other people, God in return will meet your need. Because the scripture says he already knows what we have need of even before we ask him. We always pray for what we want or what we need. Let's condition ourselves today to pray for somebody else. So I ask you today to come to the altar. Let us come. Let's come to the altar. Oh, it is Jesus. Yes, it is Jesus. Yes, Lord. Oh, it's Jesus. And let's pray in the spirit. In my soul. The word said we ought to pray oh, without ceasing. Touch the hem of his Going everywhere, lifting up holy hands. And his blood. As the Holy Spirit made intercession with groaning. They cannot be oh, uttered. Oh, it is Jesus. As you are praying. Yes, it is Jesus. Interceding. Oh, yes. Is standing Jesus proxy for someone else. Watch God give you your deliverance. Watch God give you your healing. Watch God give you your breakthrough. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Watch him. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Now, Jesus. Yes, it is Jesus. Jeremiah said, feel like fire oh, sharp in my bones. Jesus in my soul. Yes, Lord. Oh, Speak, Lord. Touch Thy servant the heareth thee. A hymn of his gone. Have your way, Holy Ghost. Oh, and his blood. As we touch it in grief of this nation. Have mercy on this nation. Oh, Have mercy on the souls. Seems like nothing. Although there are those that are bound, but yet the word of God is not bound. Then I heard Jesus. The word of God will have free course. He was passing by. There's a revival right now. So I decided. It's a season for revival. A season for revival. 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 Oh, yes. Revival. Oh, it is Jesus. Yes, it is. Jesus. Quicken, Holy Ghost. Yes, it's Jesus. Oh, in my. Soul. It's not by might. It's not by power. But it's by his spirit, said the Lord. It is the Holy Spirit that doeth the work. It is Jesus that doeth the work. He said, my father work hitherto, now I work. It is the season in which Jesus and the Holy Ghost is working. It is Jesus. He's giving sight to the blind. Allowing the deaf to hear, the dumb to speak. He curses the reproach of cancer. Cancer. 
Cancer, you are not welcome. Cancer, loose them. Loose the blood. Loose the organs. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Thank you, Jesus. Heal the limbs, Father. Heal the joints. Heal the joints. Repair the tendon. Repair the tendons in between the bones. In the name of Jesus, quicken the spine right now. Quicken the spine, the spine, the spine, the spine. Quicken the spine in the lower lumbar. Healing, healing, healing. The fervency of the Holy Ghost. Heal. Yes, it is Yes, it is Thank you, Jesus. For the repair of knees. Repairing knees, repairing hips. Thank you, Jesus. Without money, without price, without copay, your Lord is a healer. He is Jehovah Rapha. He is the Lord that healeth. He still heals. We curse the spirit of infirmity. The spirit of infirmity shall not bind you. Jesus quickens your body. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Lord. And his blood. Yes, Lord. We curse anxiety. We curse anxiety. We curse anxiety and depression. Depression. Depression and loneliness. We curse you in the name of Jesus. Whom the Son has set free is free indeed. He's free indeed. He's free indeed. You are free because of the blood. The blood never loses his power. And yes, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Heal, Father. Heal the broken spirit. The contrite heart. Heal, oh God, in the name of Jesus. We bless you, Lord. We magnify you. We glorify you, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Strengthen, O oh God, those that are weak. Empower those that struggle. In the name of Jesus, give your people wisdom. Wisdom, O oh God, to recognize the sign of the times. Give them wisdom, O oh God, that they can store up. In the